Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Sarah Traver. I'm the director here at Traver Gallery, and I am delighted to be here today with Mary Josephson, who is our featured artist this month. Um, actually, this month and last month. Yes. With her double, double header. Beautiful <laughs> exhibition, Plenty. Thank um, you, Sarah. Mary, you have been showing with the gallery for a long time now. Um, this is the first solo show we've done in a little bit. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about the show and the show title and kind of what you were thinking about with yes. this body of work? As the work, I work continuously, but as I realized that this body of work was happening, was coalescing, I started thinking about the nature of the work and I kept coming back to words like botanical garden, plenty, abundance, and then I started thinking about other, other themes, um, the flowers that were, were in the, the pieces, and all the different kinds of people that were pictured in the show. Hmm. So it just gradually develops over time, and kind of unconsciously, I realize what I'm working about. Yeah, well maybe we could just start um, by talking specifically about this piece behind us, which is really yes. kind of the centerpiece of the show. It's yes. A really um, impressive work. My work has been about the harvest, about um, planting and the cyclical nature of life, the four seasons. Uh, those have been central themes for me. And I, I grew up in the San Joaquin Valley in California and then the Central Valley and then the Willamette Valley, all places that, you know, up the coast that produce an incredible amount of, of agricultural goods. Hmm. So watching people harvest fruit and driving by orchards, fields of, of wonderful, you know, growing things has always been a big part of my life and visually too. So the bees, we're all worried about the bees because none of that can happen without the bees. So I, I actually, I went to sleep, I had a dream, the painting came to me fully realized. So I, I always keep paper by the bed, and I just do, did a sketch, and I went back to sleep. Next morning, I went and bought a couple of big panels and just sketched it in just like it came to me. Hmm. But it, it's one of my four sisters' paintings. And for every exhibition I've ever had, I've painted myself as one of four sisters. And sometimes we're Asian or black, and a lot of times we're a, mi a family of mixed people. And it, it just, that's kind of the way that I see the world. It's about cooperation, about collaboration, people working together and kind of unconsciously knowing what the other is doing and then doing their own task, you know, reflecting on what needs to be done and just jumping in and doing it. Hmm. So. One, one of the things that people always remark on in your work is the strong way that you depict women. Um, and most often it's women in your work. Yes. Um, can you talk about kind of how you think about that? And Yeah, I, my mother, um, I'm the oldest of four sisters and so is my mother. And the, the, the women in the family live to be in their middle to late 90s. So um, women, strong women, women who've had to be heads of household, who've really had to make their own place in the world and, and take care of their family, have, it's been central to my, I guess, to my consciousness from early days. But also my father, he raised us all the same. So, all right, girls, come on, we're gonna work under the, under, you know, under the car today or under the hood or <laughs> who wants to mow the yard? Um, but I didn't realize how much he, what a favor he did me until I was in my middle teens where somebody said, no, no, you're a girl. One of these guys over here will do this. And it's like, what? So I felt really lucky being able to use uh, power tools and um, felt very powerful. Felt the powerful nature of women and how capable they are. And for years, I, I made hands larger than they really were in the paintings just to signify that, that, hmm. that the women were really powerful and capable. Yeah. Um, well, that, that's kind of a nice segue because 
I mean, one of the other things that I really respond to in your work is the fact that you never shy away from experimentation and using various materials and playing. Please. There's a spirit yes. of like always engaging physically with the work. Um, and I know that uh, in this exhibition, we have some examples of some new work that you've been yes. doing. Um, you want to talk about these pieces and I'd the, love the etching? To. For years, I've wanted to to use etched glass in my work. And I thought of it as, I've been making woodblock prints, and I first thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to float another image in the glass that was gonna cover the print? So that there'd be a couple different, different visions going on. So I started experimenting with the etched glass with these pieces that are etched on the glass, and then there's black panel behind so that a shadow is cast on the, the background of three of them at least. This one's a little closer to the, uh, to the backing so you don't see much of a shadow. But um, I loved just drawing, making like an, a negative drawing and seeing how rich they could be, carrying that same kind of imagery, the flowers that there are in, in some of the other paintings that are in color with these. And it, again, as you said, Sarah, it's very playful. And that when you've been painting for like 50 years using the same medium, it's wonderful. It's like a breath of fresh air to go into another medium mm -hmm. and just it's like, oh, wow, I wonder what this can do. Or, and not knowing how it's going to turn out. You know? Yeah, and giving yourself the space to, yes. to do that. Oh, you know, that's a. Literally. Uh, it can be a scary thing, I think, for a oh, lot yeah. of artists to, when you've established yourself and a particular style to, to go in a different direction and, and retain your voice and your um, That's the thing. perspective, but to really engage a new, a new way of working. Yeah, that, that's really the truth. If you can make it still resonate as your work in the other medium, um, the first few that I did were like, oh my god, this is not <laughs> going to work. And then um, I got one that was really gorgeous went over to put it in the frame, and I really felt like Gregory, like, uh, because I dropped it, and it shattered. Oh, no. And I thought, I'm going to make another one, you know? <laughs> so um, that kind of thing, too, that happens to every artist, where you, you know, you destroy things. I've, I've dropped paintings into my lap when I would, you know, face down. You know, <laughs> I've got this great painting right on my painting smock. Oh, know? no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's a big part of it. And, the play, retaining the play yeah. in the work and not having it go, oh God, I've got something coming up and I've got to make a piece of work for it. And it better be good, you know? Mm -hmm. But not to think that way at all. It's like, oh boy, I get to go to the studio and, and there's nothing else going on. I'm going to be there all day. And, and the days just fly by. Yeah. You shared with me something that I thought was really interesting and that was that you really approach your work day as a work day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I arrive at whatever time I've told myself, if it's going to be really busy, I'll, get, I'll be in the studio by 7, 9 at the latest. And then I just work until that day's work is done. Because as anybody can tell you that, that makes art, you can't ever tell how long it's going to take to mm -hmm. finish a project. So if you really want to finish it, then it might be a lot longer than you think. But um, lately, my cat's been coming with me, too. He wears a little harness and a little sweater. And <laughs> yeah, let him go in and out of the garden. But Which um, is, works pretty well, because the studio is across the street from the house. From the house, <laughs> yep. yep. You should see yep. him run home when it's time to go home. It's like, oh, God, I'm out of here, you know. <laughs> but it's just, um, I can't believe how lucky I am and how, just how wonderful it feels to be working. Yeah. It's just, Let's look at um, some of the other pieces. Um, another uh, person who plays an important role in every show that we have yes. is your daughter, Aurora. Yes. Uh, and she's depicted here. Yes. The, again, for every show that I've done over all these many years, I do a portrait of Aurora as she looks that year. And I started doing it, I think, when she was about six years old. So I have the images of, in a file of every year that her, her changes, her hair color changes, makeup, um, because she's 
very theatrical. She was operatically trained, so she's a, a diva in the true sense of really using her whole persona and decoration is a big part of it, costuming, and so this is how she looks this year. Hmm. I love that. Um, and then what about some of the, the beaded work uh, and, and yes. embroidered work? I love doing this because the connection to folk art is, is inescapable. I've maybe growing up you know, near the border and seeing a lot of handmade work when I was younger, I've always responded to texture and the substance of handmade work, often by unschooled people. But the, again, this is a, an opportunity to work in another medium, not oil paint, and just see what happens, to create portraits. I first started making them out of embroidered wool and um, floss, and then it just started beads appeared, and then beads became the whole face, and the embroidery was the background. And so it, it's kind of flip-flopped a little bit, but I, I love making them. They're portable, and I, my mother is down in California. She's in her 90s now, and I love to see her whenever I can, but I want to work while I'm there. Hmm. So I can bring, people are like chasing the beads all over the, <laughs> the house, <laughs> but I, I love the fact that Pieces this size are very portable. So I just bring my little suitcase of, um, with all my, my gear in it and the oil painting gear too and, and just you know, make art yeah. wherever. I and love also um, you know, thinking about sort of uh, your interest in feminism and celebrating women in general. And these also, I think, speak to the tradition of what was always kind of women's work. Yes. Um, and, you know, creating yes. these things that were very functional objects in the home, but women were always, in making them, yes. expressing creativity and yes, their artistic Sarah. voice. And yes, and I, when I'm in an airport and I'm working on one of the pieces, people are attracted like magnets, and, and it's usually men. I think they come over and they sit down next to me and they don't say anything for a long time and then they go, you know, my mom did that or my, you know, my grandmother did that. And it's <laughs> like a, a feeling of comfort, like, look at her, she's working and she's very calm and it creates a whole sense of calm around too, that just repetitive working and um, continuous working, filling your time in a purposeful way and it gives me the opportunity to make these images, um, you know, of of women in a whole other way. No, not just the pretty um, thread, tiny thread mm -hmm. images of women, but really robust. Yeah, I love. Um, I feel like with this particular group of embroidered pieces, you've really become much looser and yes. free with them, which Thanks. is very fun to see. Yeah. I see that particularly in this piece here. Yes, this this work. I I made. You know, I made, worked on it for a long time, and it. I developed it to to this level, and I looked at it, and I thought, I love the breathing room around. Just that allows your eye to fill up some of the pieces, you know, the empty places, and it just seems so right that there'd be just sprouts coming out into the, the air on their own and not completely encrusted with background and... Um, yeah, it's it, almost as though the sort of figure is emerging... Yes. Uh, yeah. Or is one with that background. It's really an interesting... Yep, and um, this is the birth of the green man. And for, when I was in Europe, I began to notice all of these images of this creature called the green man that is a really old symbol of the harvest. I did some research last, you know, when we came back from Europe, and I was really intrigued that it was like, you know, I guess the modern thing is the jolly green giant, but it was the green man that was the protector of the crops. and. They cast his image in, in stone and within metal, um, on doorknobs, and any place that, that hmm. for a sign of protection. Hmm. 
Yeah, so I'm not familiar with that. I'll need to do no. some research. That's incredible. Sorry. Yeah, so it really went with all with the harvest seeds. Totally. It just. I love that. Um, you know, so Mary, um, you recently lost your husband Gregory, who was also an incredible artist and who we have a, a, had an incredible long relationship with yes. as well. Um, and you guys worked in the same studio, in different parts of the yes. same studio, but yes. shared space and obviously had huge influence on one another. Yes. Um, can you talk about, uh, share a little bit about how your work has changed since he passed and how you're approaching your work differently? Yes, well, for one thing, I have more time mm -hmm. because I'm, I, I cooked all of our meals and it did the shopping and just th those two activities um, kept me thinking, okay, all right, we're, we're finishing our work in the studio. What's in the house? You know, what can I make? Um, that, that is gone. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, my meals are much simpler when I'm by myself. So I have more time and because I'm alone quite a bit, there's a lot of time for thinking and for, um, you know, thinking what I might want to do next and how the work is developing, but especially being able to make more elaborate pieces. The, um, the embroidery is a great example of just not being able to make them as rich and full as I wanted to and not being stopped by the, the construction, you know, the constrictions of time. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that leads me to a whole other thing of when is it done? When is it, you know, when is enough enough? Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's really kind of wonderful. Um, I do feel like it's a, uh, like a renaissance in my own work in that I, well, first of all, I can focus more on the work. Uh, Aurora's grown and she's doing, you know, has her own business and she's doing what, you know, what, what she really wants to do, which is wonderful. So it's, um, who knows what's going to happen now? I mean, it, it's, I feel like the sky's the limit and there's lots of experimentation to do and I don't know what I'll try next, but, yeah. but I feel very, really open to, to new ideas and, and that's wonderful as, as a, you know, an artist who's been working for a long time. It's a very childlike feeling. Like and not in a, in in the the best sense of just open, and you know open to, um, to whatever comes. Yeah, I think know. that's it's Being wonderful. Lucky. I really feel strongly that this body of work um, does represent a a change for you. Like I see it in the work. I see it in the level of detail in the way that you build up textures and colors and. Thank you. Um, I think that that's it's really evident to me that something has shifted um, as it has, has to show. Has, <laughs> it, it has to show. Yeah. It's like, yeah. is it showing? <laughs> yeah. But it, it has to. Yeah. It, it's, and, um, and I know you feel Gregory's presence very strongly in your oh, life every day. Talk and to him every day out loud. <laughs> you know, just, what do you think about this? Yeah. You know, but um, can't help but, because we were both doing, we were both making paintings and and other, whatever kind of art we were, we felt compelled to make. Mm -hmm. But um, he's still very much a presence, and I'm so glad that he is still, that he was such a strong character that, you know, I laugh out loud all the time when I'm, you know, I'll be working and I'll think, oh God, you know, this, this is what happened the last time, you know, I, I went this way or whatever, but um, with Gregory, and, and it's, you know, it's usually a great memory, I mean. Yeah. But it's, I feel like with his work, it's, I look at it and it's different each time that I look at it too, which is the power of strong work like that. Mm -hmm. So even though I've seen things many times before, it's still giving me, um, you know, giving me a charge. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Um, is there anything else that you want to point out before we close off? I might just... Uh, point out these two mirror pieces yes. just because I think that's a, yes. an interesting direction that you took the etching yes. work in. I, I, the feeling of, of magic within pieces that they're um, kind of an ethereal 
um, they have a life of their own, particularly in the, the old mirror that I put uh, just encrusted with beads and stones and little old pieces of glass. Um, it flips over, it's two-sided, so the other side she's wearing a, a veil over her face. But I called it mirror, mirror, because when you walk up to it, I guess if you're tall enough, like Sarah, mm -hmm. you see yourself in the mirror. So um, it's like a, a double, you know, a, a double whammy. I love that. I love it's. Um, you don't expect it no. initially because you're approaching it, and you can see from an angle the etching really clearly. And then when you get right in front of it, your face is like exactly has the the drawing over it, the etching over it. It's incredible effect. Um, and it's unfortunately not something we can probably mimic in video, but... No, I, I know, but it's, um, it's very playful, yeah. and, and I love it for that. And the, the bird, um, the mirror with the bird also, yeah. um, it was a found object, and you know, as was the, the hand mirror. But it's amazing to me how they transform. Mm -hmm. This was all gray, and this one was kind of a, well, it had aged, and just to see what happens to them with, when you direct your attention to them with love and purpose, mm -hmm. that they just, um, just like people, they become this whole other thing. So that's wonderful. It's fun. Yeah. Well, I think that that statement that you just made is a wonderful place to end because I think it really perfectly states your approach to life and art and imbuing it all with love and purpose. So thank you, Mary. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you.